Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. I would like to close out this section of EC 2026, Introduction to Signal Processing, that's focused on infinite impulse response filters by looking at some movies on the DSP First website. In all of these movies, the system function is shown in the upper right, and we have an impulse response down in the lower left corner. In the upper left here, we have a pole zero plot, and then we have the frequency response in the lower right here with the magnitude shown here and the phase shown here. I previously posted a similar video focused on finite impulse response filters. In this example, we start with a pole that's on the right-hand side on the real axis, and it's very close to the unit circle, so you have a peak at DC. When I run the movie, the pole is going to move to the left along the real axis. So you'll see that the peak becomes not as tall and becomes wider, and the impulse response decays faster. At this point, we've crossed the imaginary axis. So as we move to the left here, we'll see that the impulse response will decay slower, but it's going to have this alternating plus minus structure and it will have these increasingly narrow and tall peaks at omega hat equal pi. So let's scroll down to example two. This example has two phases. In the first phase, the zero goes all the way to the right, and then the pole goes to the left to an equivalent point on the left. By equivalent, I mean that it mirrors the location that it started at. So we start out with this pole forming a low-pass filter effect. And something that's different in this example than in the first example is that we have this zero sitting here at z equals minus one, which completely nulls the frequency at omega hat equals pi. When I play the video, you'll see that as the zero moves to the right, it has more of an influence and it counteracts some of the influence of the pole. So you'll see this peak start to go down. So here the peak is going down, it's becoming broader. And when it crosses the pole, you'll see that it's now switching over to having a high pass kind of effect. So at this particular point, you have a null that's narrower than what you would get if you just have that zero. Since if you look at bits of the unit circle here and bits of the unit circle here, the zero and the pole are going to fight but exactly at DC, that zero on the unit circle conquers all. Now when I play the rest of the movie, you'll see that this zero stays here, so we'll still have this null at DC, but the pole will move towards the left, so you'll see a peak forming at omega hat equal pi. There you go. Okay, on to example three. Like in example two, we have a null that will stay locked at z equals minus one. So we have a null at omega hat equals pi. The poles are going to stay locked at angles of plus and minus pi over four radians. And when I play the movie, the poles move closer to the unit circle. You'll see these distinct peaks forming where the bandpass peaks become narrower and taller as we get closer to the unit circle. Now, when I'm trying to figure out what the frequency response is by looking at how close the poles and zeros are to the point on the unit circle corresponding to an angle of pi over four, every pole and every zero has an effect. So the peaks you see aren't going to be at exactly pi over four. But especially as this pole gets closer to the unit circle, that will have the dominant effect. So the peak is going to be awfully close to pi over four. Also notice that as the poles get closer to the unit circle, the overall impulse response decays more slowly. Okay, let's check out example four. Yet again, we have a zero at z equals minus one, so we'll have nulls at omega hat equals pi. This time the poles are going to stay the same distance from the origin, but they're going to increase in angle. As they do so, you'll see that the peaks increase in frequency, but the overall height decreases because at these higher frequencies, the zero has more of an effect. So when we start out looking at these lower frequencies, 
the poles don't have much competition from the zero that's all the way over here. But for higher frequencies, that zero is very strong. So as the poles are moving around, they find that they need to fight the effect of that zero. Now let's see what example five has in store for us. In this example, the poles are going to stay fixed at this angle of pi over four, and they're pretty close to the unit circle, so you have these very narrow tall peaks. The only thing that's going to change is the zero is going to move to the right. So as the zero moves to the right, it has the effect of wanting to pull down the frequency response down at DC more and more. So, so the peaks aren't as peaky because they have to fight the zero. Now let's see, if I move back a little bit, if we move a little bit forward, you can see the peak going down, but it actually kind of goes back up here. So at the very end here, you see the peak going back up. So the peak reaches its smallest height somewhere in this region, because when I let the movie play out, at the very end, you can see it goes up a little bit. But at the end, at DC, that's now all the way at zero. Also notice that we start out with this null at omega hat equals pi, but once the zero moves off of that, you can see that at omega hat equals pi, it goes up just a little bit, but not much. Now, you won't really be able to see it here, but the exact location of the peak is going to change as that zero moves along as well. But these poles are so close to the unit circle, it's going to be very, 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 very close to omega hat equals pi over four. Okay, on to example six. Yet again, we have a zero fixed at z equals minus one. So we'll have nulls at omega hat equals pi. The poles here, that are at angles of plus and minus pi over six that are pretty close to the unit circle are gonna stay fixed. And these poles line on the imaginary axis are going to move closer to the unit circle. Now, these poles on the imaginary axis are pretty far away from the unit circle, so they're not having a strong effect on the frequency response. You do see these very strong peaks near pi over six. As we let the poles get closer to the unit circle, you'll see that these little peaks eventually start to form and they get taller and narrower. And let's see, if we start this over again, where do we first see that peak? Maybe around there somewhere? Ah, definitely around there you can see the peak. Now in this final state, notice that this peak at pi over six is higher than the peak at pi over two. There's a couple things going on there. One is we have the zero sitting here, and that zero is very far away from the pi over six angle, but it's much closer to the pi over two angle. So this zero is pulling us down a little bit. Also, remember every pole and every zero affects every point along the unit circle. Each one will just vary by how much it affects it depending on how close it is. So when we think about what's happening at an angle of pi over six, well, yeah, this pole at pi over six is going to have a dominant effect, but this pole at minus pi over six, it's gonna have a little bit of an effect as well, pulling up the response at plus pi over six. But at this angle of pi over two, well, this pole down here at minus pi over two, that's pretty far away, so it can't quite help us as much. Okay, what about the last example, example seven? Once again, this zero at z equals minus one is gonna stay fixed, and these poles near the unit circle at angles of plus and minus pi over two are gonna stay fixed. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this pair of poles and change their angle, keeping them the same distance from the origin. So technically speaking, this peak near pi over six is gonna move around a little bit, but you won't really notice. You will notice it getting taller. But the peak up here is gonna to start to move down as this pole moves along and this pole moves along, and you'll see it will also get taller. So let's take a look at that. The reason all the peaks are getting taller is that as these poles are moving in, these poles can start helping each other out. 
So at the very end here, this pole is helping this pole, and this pole is helping this pole. Whereas out here at the very beginning, the poles can't help each other out quite as much. And at the beginning here, these poles have to fight with that zero. So we have smaller peaks here.